right, hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is November 10th, 2020, and I'm in my chilly garage, so you may hear some sniffle warning. Uh, I'm warning you ahead of time of the sniffles. Um, yeah, we just got another snow blast come through, but I think by later in the week, it'll all be gone again. So I got my heater in here. I am ready to go, and we are going to cover some things today. I uh, I was just on the phone talking with our brother Mark and telling him a little bit of the things we're going to go into. Guys, it's exciting and you know, we know that we're at this point now. We may even know it, it may even be tonight into tomorrow depending where you live in the world. Right? It this November 11th. You know, I it reminds me and I, you know, maybe I'll go into that in a minute here, but I I will go into that in a minute just to show it as one of these possibilities and i'm going to show you why but i don't want to forget as well which is this whole connection we've had to after seven days you see we touched on a lot of it in this past video man i don't know about you guys but anybody who's ever really wanted to understand these churches and the seven churches in their relation to the end of days Man, this video was gangbusters. It was it was the revelation of the end time churches. All right, in their period of time over the two sets of 7 years. Yes, there are two sets of 7 years for the tribulation for anybody that doesn't know and you're new to the ministry. The tribulation is 14 years. No, we're not here for all of it. The bride goes at the beginning, the rapture happens at the mid after seals, and then the Lord returns at the end of trumpets. Anybody that's new needs to go watch this playlist right here. At least watch the first 30 minute one, the second 30 minute one to understand who the gospels are speaking to that's been revealed, to understand what this 14 years is all about in the be and to begin to understand that revelation, and then watch the fourth video, which is the differences in the truth, to understand what caused all this confusion in the first place. And when you do that, and you come and watch this video, you will understand perfectly why in that video, when you get to the church of Laodicea and you see that it's Judah's kings, you will understand once and for all why they're gonna follow or believe who they're gonna believe at that time, not back up here at the beginning. All right, it's fantastic. It's beautiful. It was such a revelation. Uh, I had somebody post a comment under this video that um, they they remembered watching a video years ago from Chuck Missler. He's passed away now, um, but I'd watched a video from Chuck Missler and how he had taught on the churches. But like everybody, nobody has really understood their 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 teaching and how they would apply in the end of days. And Chuck Missler, he had said that in the video that uh, Chuck Missler knew that there was going to be this application somehow in relation to the end of days, but that even Chuck Missler didn't understand it. It's revealed here, brothers and sisters. I know everybody's really excited and wants the date and wants the date and wants the date and wants the date. But this ministry's first mission is the opening of the books is the revealing of the end of days, the revealing of the understanding that the Lord had it in there from Genesis to Revelation in the truth of the big picture of 21 years, the last three sets of seven, and this first one that we're in right now, we're right at the end of it. We're like right here. Before this will all begin, the next two sets of seven, the final two sets of seven. We know that we're in the true 70th year. It's been revealed. That's what this ministry is about. But of course, it's also about wanting to know when. Of course we do. It's an end time ministry. It's opening the books. It's revealing the gospels. All of it. Opening to the end of days. That's what this ministry is. I didn't know this when I made the name, by the way. When I decided to name the YouTube channel Ministry Revealed, it wasn't because I had anything revealed. I just liked the name when I was thinking of different names. That was back in January or February of 2017. I wasn't doing anything back then. It wasn't until later in the year. 
How appropriate looking back that it's called Ministry Revealed. It's been the revelation of the book of Revelation of the end of days from Genesis, from the beginning to the end, the end in the beginning. Oh man, it's awesome. And so today we're going to cover a little bit of all these things. Not so much the churches anymore. <laughs> Go watch this video if you want to understand the end time churches. But what we're going to talk about is, yeah, we're going to look at some things maybe as the possible day. But what I want to focus on more is that this 777 wasn't only about the first seven years that were coming to an end now, which we would consider the easy ones, according to Jacob's story, right? He, they, were, they flew by because he loved her so much. That's the first seven. This next seven is seals. This next seven is trumpets. Yes. Excuse me, but there was another portion to this story in relation to the 777 which is why it says now and future the now is the seventh year the seventh month and at the end of seven days this was the revelation for now and the revelation for future was even though we're in the first seven coming to the end of it there are still two sevens to go all right which again there's details in all of that. It's not just that there's two sets of seven. It's six years and the seventh year is the Sabbath. Six years of trumpets, the Lord returns and it's that final year Sabbath in trumpets. We're going to touch on some of these things with some new revelations today. And then I'm also going to talk about a potential day, meaning maybe some of you guys won't even get a chance to watch this video because I believe it's possible even tonight into tomorrow morning, my time, Mountain Standard Time, November 10th. And there's more than one reason. And I'm going to start there today. And then I'm going to take it back to this a uh, little bit of the election stuff, but not so much the election. There's been a lot of people that gave words that President Trump was going to win. And now there's a lot of backpedaling going on. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, uh, uh, um, you know, oh, Trump is still going to win. I'm going to show you what was said here in this ministry about two years ago that made no difference, Trump win or lose. And it was all based on the revelation of 70 years. And that even though we thought the true 70 years was when they were observing it, and then we thought it was the next year because of their government, well, we realized just recently that, that uh, uh, Leviticus 19 tells us when you come into the land for three years they're not to to take of it not to 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 enjoy the fruits and everything thereof not until the fourth year when everything's glory to the lord right we showed that in um in this revelation here you know this whole ministry having been the one of the two keys was the whole portion of the 14 years the final two sets of seven well, when you take those sevens back and you say, well, wait a second. According to the calculation, the 70 years should have begun in 1951. What about 1948, 49, 50? You know, from 48 to 49 is one. 49 to 50 is two. 50 to 51, all spring to spring, about that time of their, of their back in the land. How do we account for these three, these three years? Well, that revelation, yes, it's in many places of the Bible, three years here, three years there, but it was Leviticus 19 that revealed 20, what, 2,500, 35, uh, I think over 3,500, 4,000 years ago, whatever it was, something like that. It was built into the word, knowing that they were going to come into the land with still three years remaining. Do you get that? Three years were going to be remaining in a, in a Shemitah cycle. So that when they came into the land, according to Leviticus, it was three more years before they could then begin to count. And why? Because the revelation of the 14, the 7 and 7, the final two sets of 7, reveals the Sabbath years. It reveals to us the count. So we took it all the way back to Christ's birth. And we realized that the true, according to Scripture, would then begin in 1951, and that's exactly what this revelation showed, okay? So we understand this. Well, knowing these things, I mean, 
we we know that we're it's related to the seventh it's related to the sabbath year seventh oh and that's what this is showing as well right it's relating to the sabbath year seventh so the 70th year of israel is the seventh year sabbath in 2020 and the year goes from spring to spring so just like psalms 90 and 10 says from 71 it says from 70 to 80 but when you say that you don't start at 70 you start at 71. So starting from 71, which would be right here, the spring of 2021, the story is 14 years. So we can't be in the 14 years yet, but it doesn't mean the bride goes like, we have to wait all the way to the spring to the start of the 14 years. You're gonna see as we go through this today, this revelation I'm gonna show you about the months. We recently, well, for a little while now, we've been talking about the day right how how numbers chapter seven you know how charles had found that when you go to the end of john chapter seven it, it it's the end of tabernacles but at the end of tabernacles you know it ends in in verse 53 it's kind of it ends in a strange way many people have believed that for decades so charles went and found another piece of scripture another chapter with uh went to seven chapters another book i should say that goes to seven chapters and went past 53 verses and numbers chapter 54 begins with on the eighth day and the names mean reward of god god as in the sun the rock has ransomed (laughs) i mean it's perfect it's perfect and so you know when people say well what does that have to do with anything about now being perfect Well, if you're new to the ministry, you won't understand what all this is about. All of these books have opened unto us in their chapters relating to years in the coming tribulation. Events within them, like the escape of the Gentile bride, like the rapture time of the church, like the return of the Lord in the the, the final year and taking care of the cleanup, if you will all of it is in there and so when when we get to to that portion in numbers and we saw what it said we were like wow and that's talking about the days and we know it's connected to the eighth day and then i started saying just uh yesterday so i discovered this not another open book which is the book of judges which we'll get into in a little while and it was telling us the same thing so it it's going to be in the in the notes you'll see you'll end up seeing we got the book of judges there now we'll get into it a little bit but it ends up telling us the exact same thing the seventh year something related to after seven days and i started saying wait a second yesterday i started saying well what if i start looking at the months you know we've recently started looking at the months a little closer you know, from Zechariah and Nehemiah and and again in Zechariah chapter 1 and chapter 7, Nehemiah 1. So what if we look at these a little bit more? And if we were able to find a chapter like Numbers chapter 7 did, and it had days and people's names had meanings, what if I did this search to see if we can find something like that in relation to the 12 months. Well, hold on tight, because I found it. Just like when I spoke in this video, we we showed how the book of Revelation, not a type and shadow of every chapter of the year, but with the escape, the rapture, and the return, and I showed that the escape was about seven months, whereas the seventh seal at the beginning of chapter eight was about five months when it said about half an hour it's on the five month side of six months whereas chapter seven is on the seventh month side of six months and of course because it's in chapter seven it's a type and shadow of the seventh year now outside of that we didn't get a whole lot more all right in relation to the month because john see seven chapters as seven years okay this is the the 21 22 years this is like the the picture of of jacob works seven years gets his bride waits that one week has another seven years 
He puts in those seven years for Rachel, and then he works six more years for his cattle. And then God makes a covenant with him. Well, in John, we have John seven years, seven chapters. And in John, the whole story is about tabernacles to the last day of tabernacles. And then what I was just telling you about to the eighth day. Well, we went to Genesis. We've known Genesis for a long time. Genesis and John, 21 chapters are a type and shadow of each other. The same type of context is in them. And in Genesis 7, we have Noah and his family getting in the ark after seven days. Boom, the door's locked. Again, same thing. You're going to find when we get into this with Judges, wait till you see what we find in Judges 15. Because you're going to find Judges is like Exodus. The revelation was in reverse. For two years, since I came to understand over two and a half years ago, Zechariah and Hosea being 14, when that revelation came and all of this started opening up in the books, I knew Judges had something to it because it had 21 chapters. But I kept looking at it as 1 through 21 and it just wasn't connecting. It wasn't making sense. Well, when I discovered this a couple days ago, boom, it all opened up again everything in order yet again with their types and shadows of history past to future revelation built within it this is how awesome god is guys this is the opening of the end time books this is literally what daniel was told in daniel cha daniel 12 chapter uh, verse 4 seal up the books till the end when they'll begin to be opened see this is what's going on here and we've got another one we're going to get into today. But what we found out was that there, the, there had to be something maybe more that I could show with months than just what I was telling you about in this last video in relation to Genesis. We certainly have the years. We know it's the 70th. We know it's the 7th. We know there's a connection to seven days and after seven days. We also know, <clears throat> I should bring this up because this is important. We also know 1 Kings chapter 8, all about the ark. We talked about that in the last video. You know how, how Revelation chapter 7 ends on chapter 7, verse 17. It's the 717 and the ark is 727 and 727 comes from the root word 717. I mean, it, it's the revelation, but what's this about? What's going on here? It's the seventh month. It's the feast of the seventh month. It's the feast of tabernacles. And the reason I'm bringing it up here again is to say, remember, it was seven days and seven days. Somebody posted it in the forum. For those that don't know and are new to the ministry, you can go to the Ministry Revealed website and join the forum from there. You'll see it in the menu and you can click on there and take you 10 seconds to sign up. And there's several hundred people in there sharing all sorts of things. But she, one of the ladies had posted, one of the sisters had posted, you know, well, let's remember what you spoke about back in 1 Kings 8. And it's true, but I didn't think, guys, I didn't think we would get to this point. I didn't think we would get to here. <coughs> Excuse me. I thought it was over here. Yesterday, the Sunday into Monday. Because... It's the seven, the, the true tabernacles. We know by the Enoch calendar, the sun, moon, star calendar, that we're not really in the eighth month right now. We are truly in the seventh month. Okay, we can determine that. We have determined it. Ivan and others have determined it and have seen it. We can go in and we've, we've already done this several times with Stellarium. We know that we're in the seventh month, not in the eighth. And we know that it began, tabernacles, true tabernacles began right here. So when it came to here and still nothing happened, well, when the lady had posted, when the sister had posted, well, even pr just prior to this, she says, well, let's not forget, <clears throat> First Kings 8 has the 7 and 7 that you taught on. I didn't think we were still going to potentially go to here. Because... I thought this seven was the wedding. The bride's gone. There's the seven-day wedding of the Gentile bride. 
And then the Lord would return and it would be, no, I don't mean the Lord return like many people think, right? Those here that have been following for a while. We know the Son of Man is coming for 40 days. And I thought that was the connection to it. So now that this is passed, now we've got to say, well, wait a second. Have, have we understood this properly? Well, that's why I'm bringing up First Kings again. Because we know this story of seven and seven being added is only twice in scripture one is a seven and seven even 14 days which is directly related to a period of now that we've been talking about the next one i think it's somewhere in uh, first or second chronicles that talks about it that one talks about second passover that is a type and shadow of a future one this is the beginning one so now that this one this first seven is passed we are certainly this would have been the seven this would have been the beginning of the eighth so now we are certainly in that midst right now we are in that second set of seven days so now the question became can i can i understand more lord can we understand more in relation to this seventh month. Can I prove out more with this seventh month? Well, guys, the seventh month ends right in here. We're right here. After this seventh month, as I go into this and I start showing you these things with the months, we're gonna say, well, wait a second. Everything is pointing to the seventh month, not just that one piece of Revelation chapter seven. All right, <clears throat> so we're going to go into all these things today. We're going to go in. Yes, you've already started seeing little bits of it, but now we're going to really get into it. But first of all, I want to share something here that, uh, in fact, I had this for the end, but I'm going to show it now because the way I had started talking about this, sip of coffee, is the time in Jerusalem. One of our brothers brought it up in the comments in the forum, and said that the 11th Israel uh, sunrise is 603. And I said, oh, let me go have a look at that again. I looked, I'm like, no, wait a second. November 10th in Jerusalem, we, we don't just type in Israel, type in Jerusalem. Jerusalem sunrise is 603 today. But Jerusalem sunrise tomorrow, November 11th, which for me where I live, would be uh i believe it's about uh what 9 9 p.m tonight all right 9 4 p.m my time tonight all right there's a reason i'm bringing it up because 603 the brother said you know look up what the what the greek word is for 603 well check this out the greek word for 603 is anxious and persistent expectation it's called the definition is earnest expectation uh that's definitely us right that's definitely people watching for the escape watching for the events watching for for the time of the the escaping of the bride well when you look into it it's only used twice it's found in Romans chapter 8. Let's go look at Romans chapter 8. What is Romans chapter 8 all about, guys? Why don't I have this highlighted here? Oh. Okay, let's go into Romans chapter 8. Watch this. <clears throat> look at the, the definition of these things. I want it to go to, okay, right around 19. Watch this. Look at what this is all about. Okay, uh, starting even in verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Then we have all this thing about the heirs of Christ. That's us. For as many are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That would be us, right? The the true believers, those loving and seeking, repentant, seeking the Lord, loving the Lord, 
They are the sons of God or the sons and daughters of God. Okay, same thing. <clears throat> we read down here in verse 16 and 17. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Watch this. Let's go to verse 19. Here it comes. For the earnest expectation, this is the word, for the earnest expectation, in a sense of watching, intense anticipation. This is what we're doing right now. And what we have been doing. Of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of of God. We are waiting for that manifestation, right? That that original creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. It's this intense anticipation. And here we are today, 603, in this intense anticipation of God. Well, what if we go to 604? Well, 604 is on the 11th many of you know there's there's there appears to be this connection some people see 11 11 that's been around for a lot of people right so you could say november 11th but we also know that when christ was here in the julian calendar even up till about four or five hundred years ago before rome changed it it was november wasn't the 11th month of the year it was the ninth month okay it was the ninth month on the Julian calendar. That's why it's called nine. It's Nieve, right? Or the or the Greek version, but it has to do with nine. Just like September 7, right? You can say the French, the Greek, the 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 uh oh, you can say French, Greek, all that. So you had Nieve, you had um October, right? Eight October, right? Like an octagon, you have November, Nieve, 9. You have Dies, December, 10. And then they made up January and February. Well, if that also being the case, then November 11th is 9-11. And the reason I want to bring that up is because of one of our brothers in Christ. He had a 20 or 21 day fast, just a water fast. Unbelievable, right? And he had asked the Lord, Lord, can it be uh, along the lines of Lord, can, can it be given? Can you let me know when this will come? And he's been telling me for a little while now, I think this was back uh, maybe earlier in October or something like that. And he had said that uh, the Lord, he, it was 9-11 or 11-9, I think he said, because of where he lives, right? He's south of the equator. So i believe and trust in this brother that he believes that the lord uh that in that the lord shared this with him well it's fitting because it's right in the mix of this time frame that we're talking about but you know what this was also an 11 9 right well guess what this is the last option an 11 9. so this is definitely high watch right now but we're at the point that any of it and all of it is high watch. But I'm going to show you even a little bit more in all of this that the month of seven is definitely key. So now let's look at what this sunrise means on November 9-11, which is 604. This is pretty, this is wild. Watch this. Here it is to reconcile completely to reconcile back again to bring back a former state of harmony only found three times colossians twice guys this is the revelation of this timing now when i say that where was it 
I'm not saying this is necessarily this, this is it, this is it, no matter what I'm telling you. No, I'm saying, whoa, pay attention. Sorry, I thought the I had these um, highlighted already. So verse 20. Okay. So here we go. So when we look at this, we can say, well, you know, have we had something like this happen in the past? You know, looking at the, the dawn and the time of dawn. Yeah, I mean, it's very exciting. When you have these back-to-back -back numbers in the Greek that are literally the time of sunrise in Jerusalem, in the time that we're looking at within the week of the month of the year of the decade that we're looking for, of course, this kind of stuff gets exciting. Look, and listen to what it even says here. First Col uh, Colossians 8 verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, that in all things we might have preeminence. Uh, where is it? Verse 20. And have made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile, this is the word, to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in the earth or things in heaven. So this word, there it is, reconcile. Hey, look at what it means. To change mutually, going deeper into the root to make different. The word is to make different, to reconcile, to be completely made whole. It's connected through the body and the head. Worth keeping an eye out. Certainly worth keeping an eye out for tonight. And that was the one that I was gonna share later, but I'm gonna share it now. Or, but I've shared now, okay. With that, knowing where we are, I know I'm harping on it, but understanding where we are, I'm not going to play this video here. This is the video I did, see? December 3rd, 2018. This video I did was about revealing that Trump would not complete his first term. All right? Judgment has already been determined. Now, when I spoke this, I spoke this understanding or believing, I should say, that the 70th, we were in the midst of seven of the 70th in December 2018. By 2019 in May, they turned 71. And I thought, ah, what have we missed, Lord? And then 2020, they turned 72. And we said, no, it can't be because, okay, the government, now they're in their 71st. But we realize because of Psalms 90 and 10, they can't be in their 71st or 72nd. They must truly still be, according to the Lord, in their 70th. And now we have that revelation. I bring that up again because the revelation that I spoke about in this video was about Trump not completing his term and it was relating to the 70th year. You see, there's a lot of people saying Trump uh, is was going to win. Trump is going to win. Our ministry here, it, what I was saying was it never mattered. It didn't matter if Trump wins or if Trump loses, he would not complete his first term. And why won't he complete his first term? Because we were in the 70th year and everything would begin at some point towards the latter portion of that 70th year. And here we are. In the 70th year, whether people think he's going to win through through the, the Supreme Court or not, it makes no difference. Judgment has already been determined. Do you see, uh, when I look at somebody, somebody will say, well, what about Kim Clement? You know, Kim Clement said Trump would win two terms. Well, here's what I have to say about Kim Clement. I, whether some people like him or don't like him, He's the one. You know, other people say, well, I knew Trump was going to win. Well, look, when you started thinking about it, most people, it was a 50-50. It was only Trump or Hillary. Just like now. 
Oh, I wanted to be the one to predict that Trump was going to win. Look, it was a 50-50 choice. He was already president. Okay? Kim, what Kim Clement did was much deeper and much further back. Nobody knew Trump was ever really ever going to run. And what he saw and what he spoke about him, and of course, it came to pass. But now he said that he would see he had seen him to serve two terms. Well, one of the things I have to say about that is is that um, he. Sorry, I'm just distracted by the heater here. I think my heater's going out. Anyways, let me turn that off for a bit. Um, what he was saying by that, and what I believe is. He, he died in 2016, just around the time of the election. And the Lord isn't going to start saying, oh, he's not going to win the second one. Because there was there was an option given. That's what I talk about in this in this video. That's what Sadhu talks about. And I'm going to show you the original video, like about three minutes of it. Sadhu, there was that option for the church in America. There was the option for them to stand with their president, to support and pray for him, to strengthen him. And they got him in, and the Lord was using him. First day in office, he writes, uh, he writes uh, uh, um, uh, the authority that he has, and he immediately, his very first thing, is he cancels $600 million a year for, I think it was international abortion for, uh, for Americans. Canceled, day one very first act he did and many many other things that he did whether people like him don't like him oh you shouldn't act like this if you're christian it, it, that's not the point the lord was using him but we've been crying out since before this time that the church had already failed because about a year or so into his term maybe a year and a half the church started turning they started speaking against him and there were there were large groups coming against him now that had supported him. Well, Sadhu also spoke that, look, there's, there's four more years that will be allotted for the church in America. God has appointed another four years of Trump. Unless, and you see, that's the point that Kim Clement, I don't believe God, that he would get a second term if, but the Lord isn't going to have him prophesy, he's going to lose, he's going to lose, oh, the church is going to fail. It was to keep the church praying, to keep him strengthened, to keep picking him up and raising him up. Everybody is against him, except for the close team that he has. All of the media, all of the enemy is against him, yet so many in the church and conspiracy think that it's a conspiracy with him, with them, that they're all hating him to get the world to hate him, but they really want him. And I don't get it. <laughs> doesn't make sense to me. All right? But... This is what I'm saying. It's already been determined. They're not, they're not going to go run around and saying, oh, church, you've already failed. The Lord still wants them to, to, to push it, to, to pick it up. But they have failed. And the evidence of the failure, first of all, is probably Trump having lost. But second, is it's the 70th year. Of course God knew. Of course it was already built into Scripture. But the world never got it. The, ne the world never understood it anyways. So they thought four more years, four more years. Nope. It was already determined. And I'm going to show you this one now. Just uh, three minutes of it. But I'm going to pause because I need my heater on. All right. I'm back. See, so you guys didn't even notice. <laughs> you guys are like, here, Canadian, eh? Cold weather. All right. Let me play this so you guys can understand. There's a lot of new people that have come since uh since i originally shared this video thousands more of you uh since i originally shared this and and spoke about it's already been determined so let's have a listen like, like the, the desire, desire for, a, for revival a revival in the us, in the US. You, know, you know the lord, the lord spoke, to spoke to me about this nation what you, what need, you need is not, is not a revival. revival what you what need, you need is to, is to put, put your, your house in order. order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, what, That's you what you need to do. When, when President Trump, Trump or when, or when Mr. Donald, Donald Trump, Trump was, was elected, elected the, president the President of the, of the US, US, the Lord spoke, the Lord spoke and said, 
his election is a sign that he is giving, is giving you four years, years of grace. Last chance grace. grace. Last chance. Four years, four years to put your house in, in order. order. Four, four years, years to get your act right. right. Four years, four years to put, to put your, your life right. right. Four, four years, years to restore, restore all things back together, together in its, in its right, right place. place. Four, four years, years to get, to get rid, of rid of all the leaven from your, from your miss. miss. Four, years four years for the bride, for the bride to, get to get ready. You have you four, have four good, good years. years. If, if you make, you make good, good of these four years, four years then you then will have, have many, many more, more good, good years, years to, come. to come. If you, if you fail, fail in putting, in putting your, house your house in order, order in these four, four, four years, then, then great, great tribulation and great captivity, and great captivity will come. This is, this number, is one. number one. Number, number two. two. The second, the second part, part that I will share, share with you, this word this I will see. see. Right now, right now, during, during when, when the worship, worship was going on, I saw, I the, Lord saw the Lord Jesus in the heavens. heavens. Okay, I've talked about this a number of times, but what he goes on to talk about right here, right now, he didn't come to this conference back in August of 2017 to talk about this. He said, "There, you do right in the church, you smarten up and you get your act in order, God will give you grace of many more years. But then 10 minutes before coming on stage, the Lord showed him this. And he's, and he's told me, told me said, tell, tell these people, people to pray, pray for their for president, president very much. Very much. Because, because there is a danger for his, for his life and for, and for his, his presidency. presidency. Yes, yes. If, he if he fails, fails to complete his term, his term you, see, you see, heaven, heaven has, has determined, determined Four good years for the U.S. For brother, Mr. Gabgood is four years of grace. It's been a portion for you. If he does not complete his term, that means the time of grace is aborted. If the, if the time of, of grace is aborted, aborted you, go you go into your captivity. And, and if when you go into captivity, or when, or when his presidency, presidency is aborted, aborted the, church the church in the U.S. will be held accountable before God. Before God. God, God will hold you accountable for all, for all the mess, mess that, will that will come upon this nation. How about that? How about that? Seeing and knowing where we are right now, today, as I'm speaking this to you. We know it's the true 70th year. We know it's the seventh year. We know we're in the seventh month. Waiting for after seven days. Trump having lost and him telling us that your captivity will follow if Trump doesn't complete his first term. His first term doesn't end until January 19th, 20th. He won't make it to the end of his first term. That's what I've been telling you for two years. And when you go listen to Sadhu's new one, this was, I believe, in October, he sounds like, you know, Trump's supposed to win, Trump's supposed to win. But what you need is to understand it with what he spoke about three, four years earlier. Yes, it's, it's allotted. You can, you can. Pick him up. Stand up for your, go out and vote. It's your responsibility. Church, vote for Trump. But what does it mean that they didn't? They never got their house in order. They weren't prepared. And what's going to come? Captivity captivity 
I won't play this one. You guys can go watch this one for yourself. It'll sound confusing at first because it sounds like, yeah, God's apportioned it. Yeah, God's apportioned it. Well, that's because God's not going to tell them to go say they've already failed. They've already failed. Hey, go tell them they already failed. Don't worry about it. Captivity's coming. <laughs> Maybe he should have. Definitely everybody should be speaking it now. Wake up, church. Get your house in order. Captivity is coming. He will not complete his first term. It's all about to change. Now watch this. Okay? I was going to show that one, but maybe we'll just go right into Zechariah. Let's go into this, this teaching here and talking about these, these months. All right? We've talked about these things with Zechariah before. <coughs> Zechariah, in fact, is one that we pay extra close attention to because Zechariah is talking about 14 years. It has the revelation of 14 years in it to Judah. Whereas Hosea has it to Israel or the Gentiles. That's why in Romans, he says to the Gentiles, not to the Jew only, but also to the Gentiles. And as I told them in Osi, that they would not be mine and that she would not be but be my beloved now they shall be now she shall be my beloved and in chapter 1 verse 2 <clears throat> excuse me in hosea we see it's the beginning go get your wife your wife of whoredoms your children of whoredom and people say oh no no i'm not a whore I'm not a whore. I'm not some adulterer. It's not saying that we're adulterers and whores. It's, it's a representation of, of the Gentiles. Just like when Christ was here. Did, when Christ came, did he come for the Gentiles or did he come for Israel? Did he come for Judah or did he come for Israel? He came for Israel. He came for the lost tribes. But the Gentiles had to be grafted in. Remember, the northern tribes went into all the world, but even in Samaria, they were mixing themselves with all the Gentiles. So the Gentiles had to be grafted in for him to be able to get Israel as well. And the Gentiles, even by Christ, were referred to as dogs. Okay? As dogs. They're referred to as dogs. They're referred to as adul uh, adulterers. It doesn't mean we're literally adulterers or dogs. It was a reference to Gentiles. You know, you guys all understand with John chapter 8, after the seven years and the seventh chapter being about the seven years of tabernacles, and right here at the beginning, it's a woman taken in adultery standing before the Lord. Right, he's down on one knee, writing in the sand, looks up, and it's only her standing before him. It's the picture of the Gentile bride, and what is she? She's an adulterer. It's the same type and shadow going on. This is what's happening. And people, they have a tough time because it says an adulteress. Well, do you know Ruth even referred to herself as one? You see, because Ruth says, seeing that I am a stranger. What does the word stranger mean? Adulterous. Oh, there it is again. You see? And look at this. Adulterous meaning what? Different and wonderful. That's pretty interesting, being different and wonderful. It connects to some of these other words we were talking about earlier. See, make different, right? Change, reconcile fully. There's a connection to being an adulteress. Being different, being uh, uh, being wonderful, non-relative, foreign, stranger. So a stranger, an adulterer, a dog, alien. It all means Gentile. Okay, it means non-Jewish. All right, that's what's going on here. And so we know this now with Hosea, and we understand, and we've talked about this before with Hosea many times. And when we go to Zechariah, who also has 14 chapters, when we come to Zechariah, we know that Zechariah is written 
to the Jews, okay, is written to Judah, we can say, well, let's have a look at these things with months. Let's see if we can dig a little bit closer into these months. Well, in Zechariah chapter 7, we know there's the fifth month and the seventh month. And it says, even those 70 years. This is a big deal. What was the fasting in the morning of the fifth month? It was the ninth of Av. What was the fasting in the morning of the seventh month? It was the third of Tishri. And it says, even those 70 years. So for 70 years, they did these things in the fifth and seventh month. What did we recently realize this year? In the last few weeks? That this is truly the 70th year. So they needed to observe the fifth and the seventh month of the fasting and mourning day, which have both now passed. When you read the rest in, in verse 7, it says, Should you not hear the words by the Lord when he cried by the former prophets, when Jerusalem was inhabited, and the cities thereof round about when men inhabited the south plain? They're no longer there. There's been an attack. They've been fleeing. When you go to chapter 8 of Zechariah, chapter 8 after chapter 7, we see down Laurel, first of all, we know it's the beginning of trumpets. The Lord is there on Mount Zion. The foundation is laid. Now they're going to start rebuilding. But look at what it says further down. In the fast of the fourth month, in the fast of the fifth month, well, the fifth one they observed. In the fast of the seventh, they've observed it. But it also says in the fast of the tenth. All of these fasts will now be joyful, rejoicing, peace. When? At the beginning of trumpets, when the Lord is returned on Mount Zion. Okay, that rock carved without hand. But in Zechariah chapter 7, it specifically didn't mention the 10th. Why doesn't it mention the 10th? Because from the 7th to the starting of the 10th, they will have been attacked and destroyed. That is the first attack coming upon Jerusalem, coming upon Israel this year. And right now, as I'm speaking to you, we are in the seventh month. But prior to their fast of the tenth month, they'll be attacked. Hence, it's not mentioned in chapter seven because they never got to observe it. So what did we show in chapter seven? We showed the fifth month, and the seventh month that they would observe, but there's no mention of the tenth one. Well, check this out. When we go back now to Zechariah chapter one, you see Zechariah chapter seven said those 70 years as a past tense, you see, as a past tense going back to the current 70 years. And when we come to Zechariah chapter one, you guys all know this, it talks about these 70 years. So, what if we go back to the beginning and see where Zechariah chapter 1 in this big picture here is talking about? In the eighth month. In the eighth month. It's talking about the eighth month. So, we've covered five they would observe, seven they would observe, but now in relation to this talking of the end of days being mentioned, it's now saying in the eighth month. In a previous video, we then we then showed you when we go to Nehemiah, where's Nehemiah? When we go to Nehemiah chapter one, Nehemiah chapter one is now in the ninth month. And it's the ninth month of the 20th year. And in this ninth month, it's God having pity in their darkness. Pity in their darkness from the bright, white, shiny, gorgeous palace. And it's talking about an affliction that had already come upon them and how some have escaped out of the city. Being warned that if they don't turn, there's another one that's going to completely scatter them out of the city, which we know will be the second attack. And when World War III breaks out 
among the nations after, and they'll be out of the land now for seven years. This one is talking about the first attack, and it's telling us in the ninth month of the 20th year when they're looking at it. You see, in Zechariah chapter 1, this is for people who have been watching for a little bit, right? To understand how we got to this point. When we come back to Zechariah chapter 1, it's the 8th month. So sometime from the 8th month, which means even we have God remembered the those that were blessing and kneeling to him in a timely manner, you can say, right? It says timely. So God remembers this group in the 8th month. Well, who is he remembering? What, what What's happened? Is there somebody already gone? Why doesn't it start at the seventh month or the sixth or the fifth month? Because according to Zechariah chapter seven, everything was fine for 70 years until the fifth, right into the seventh month when you would observe it. It was fine for 70 years. But then suddenly something is changing. Because now we have the 8th. When we get to the ninth, we see there was an attack. Of course, because the attack had to come, as we just saw in, Re in uh, Zechariah 7, into 8 before the 10th fasting would come. That's why it's not mentioned in Zechariah 7. So we got 5, we got 7, we got 8, we got 9 looking back in an attack. But in 8... There's, there's a group that he's remembering. Well, remembering, and that word remembering is the same word for the ark. When God has remembered, to mark and remember, 2142. Remember we said how this connected to the ark? You go to chapter 8, verse 1, God remembered, there it is. 2142, 2142. Could it be that what Zechariah chapter 1 is saying by starting in chapter, uh, sorry, by starting in uh, verse, sorry, in month eight, and is using the word with remembered, that it's remembering somebody, that this group that's in the ark that, that's already happened. There's something going on from, from at some point in the seventh to some point at this now being in the eighth where he's remembering them. And then, of course, like I said, then we've got nine. We could see there was an attack because at some time in the ninth month, they're looking from heaven, having pity over the darkness that's all over the land. You see? Ten is not mentioned because the attack will have happened and they're not going to observe the tenth of that fasting because the first attack comes. And then we go down to Zechariah chapter 1, verse 7, and it says it's the 24th, 20 fourth day of the 11th month and this is when the red horse rider is now seen coming among the trees the red horse rider is going to be there he's creeping around not fully realized yet not fully revealed but he's on his way he's not going to really show up until the beginning of the 14 years right around that time maybe just before right around that early early spring of 2021 because it's the red horse rider that's when war breaks out when world war will break out it'd be the second attack on israel world war three breaks out and for seven years the land will be vacant so you see we've got something going on here we can understand some of these months we, we talked about these not too long ago so what I thought we can do is, you know, as we're digging in and as we've been understanding these a little bit more and a little bit more, we also see this connection to the 70 years. You see, therefore, in Daniel 9, verse 2, therefore the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations, plural, of Jeremiah uh, of Jerusalem. Because there's more than one. We spoke about this recently. This is talking about one already taking place. 
And it's all about the 70 years or 70 weeks. And then we see a commandment went forth to allow them to rebuild, but it's not going to happen for seven years. It's an attack. Then a decree. Then the World War III, the Red Horse Rider shows up and World War III in the spring of 2021 and the 14 years begins. But this is proof again that an attack comes still within the 70th year. And the months are showing us that it's got to be sometime no later than at some point in the ninth month because they're already looking back in Nehemiah 1 in the ninth month in the 20th year, 2020, that it's already happened. So again, we, we see where the attack time frame has taken place sometime from in the 8th to sometime in the ninth is when the attack took place. We see in Daniel that it's related to a period in 70 years. We see it in Zechariah chapter 7. We see it from starting in Zechariah chapter 1. We now see seven years everywhere connected to seven days. Seventh chapter of Genesis. Why does seventh chapter of Genesis? Because we're looking at the big picture here. In the 21 years. So the seventh of Genesis, chapter 7. Chapter 7. And what do we see? After seven days. So they were getting in. But it wasn't until after seven days the flood was began it was on the, upon the earth when we go to john chapter 7 as we were talking about earlier it's all about tabernacles the seventh day feast in the seventh month and he talks about they they say where are you going to go oh you're going to go to the gentiles you're going to go and teach to the gentiles and he says everybody who thirsts come unto me he's living water and it's the end of the seventh day what comes next Chapter 8 or the 8th day. Where is he going to go when the 40 days begins? He's going to go teach among the Gentiles. He's about to bring in the Gentile bride. So we're seeing all of these connections. And then like I said with Revelation chapter 7. We can look at Revelation chapter 7 like 22 chapters. See the 22 years. The escape. There's a group standing before the Lord in chapter 7. Chapter 14, the 144,000 on Mount Zion with the Lord and the harvest of the great sickle in verse 14. Chapter 20, the Lord returns, which would be at the end of 20 years. The Lord returns. Satan is cast and bound into the pit. You see, these things are all in order and they're all relating to this end of seven years. Even Exodus 34 in reverse, right? From Exodus 34 to Exodus 19. Exodus 34 says at the the feast of the ingathering, or sorry, the feast of the first fruits of the wheat harvest is to be observed, right? The, The feast of the first fruits of the wheat harvest, which is for Pentecost, is to be observed at the feast of ingathering, at the year's end. (laughs) What I'm trying to, 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 remind you guys and to strengthen you guys in is every single piece that has been revealed has proven the 70th year and the seventh and has this after seven days and appears to have something with the seventh month 70 years seventh year seven days well what about the month can we have more evidence than just uh, than just revelation of what I shared before? That it's the seven-month side compared to chapter 8, which is about five months. Okay? So, let's see if we can dig something more into these months. Okay? We talked about the days here, right? Like we did in, in Numbers chapter 7. On the eighth day, so there's one, two, three, four, five. It goes up to 12 days. And the one over the eighth day is Gamil. And Gamil means reward of God. And this name means uh, the son that is the rock has ransomed. Or the rock that is the son of God has ransomed. When? 
on the eighth day. What did what did what did uh, Genesis say? Genesis said after seven days. What did John say? It was the seven days of the Feast of Tabernacles, and the next day would be the eighth day, and it's the adulterer standing before him. Or it's Numbers chapter 7, the eighth day. I'm trying to nail it in that we're here, and I'm going to give you even more evidence that shows that we're here, that we'll be able to see 70, seven years, seven months, and seven days. Which is why we just can't, you know, don't be disappointed yet. Don't be all bummed. The month ends right here. This is the true end of the 70th uh, of the seventh month in the 70th year in the seventh year. Okay? So what I did is I said, "Wait a second. We've got all of these things that we were looking at recently with months. 5, 7, 8, Nine, no tenth, because there, there'd be just the first attack happened before that. They're not going to observe it. Then we got the eleventh coming back to the eleventh again in Zechariah one. So I said, what if I can do a search and find out somewhere more about the months? Well, guess what? Ta-da! First Chronicles chapter seven. I decided to go into Blue Letter Bible. And in Blue Letter Bible, where is it? I decided to go and just search in first month, second month, third month, fourth month. And I did it for all 12 months. And what I realized was there's a chapter like numbers, but instead of the days, it has the months. It has the months. Let's go have a look. Are you ready for this? God is so good, man. Just, just continuous piece after piece, detail after detail, just keeps feeding it and feeding it. All right, check this out. Watch this. We're going to look at the seventh month, the eighth month, the ninth month, maybe even the tenth but or the eleventh. But what are we looking for? What was my whole point of doing this? I wanted to see if I can understand something in greater detail that would give us more revelation about the seventh month that we have properly understood the seventh year and the seventh month that we're here now. Watch this. Just like numbers, we're going to do it with the months. The seventh captain for the seventh month was Helez, the Pelonite of the children of Ephraim, and in his course were 24,000. Check this out. Look at the name Helez. Okay? Here it is. 2503. Perhaps strength comes from 2502. Means to depart, to deliver, to take away. And we say, whoa, that's getting pretty cool. Here, check it out. Here it is. Hebrew word 2503. The name is Helez. He has saved. Hello. <laughs> I saw this and I was like, wait, wait, what? This is exactly what we're looking for. I, I was seeking and asking the Lord, can I understand more in this seventh month? Can I understand that, that we've understood that it really is on, on the about is the seventh month side that we're in right now. That we're looking in the seventh month, which would confirm that this, that we're here. With all the other stuff that we have, can we confirm this month? The seventh month, leader of the seventh month, he has saved. He has saved. There's where it talks about it. The, the four chapters it talks about. Well, it gets better. Because remember, it means you go to the root word, you can see it to deliver, to depart, to take away. Well, guess what? Let's see of who he's from. Meaning to separate. <clears throat> well, wait a second. That's starting to sound interesting, doesn't it? To separate. To distinguish. Didn't we just talk about this? To put a difference. Show marvelous. Separate. Set apart. Make wonderfully. So his name is 
he, what was it? He has saved. He has saved, distinguished, set apart, made wonderfully. This is the seventh month, brothers and sisters. Now, what about the eighth month? What about the eighth month? Let's have a look at that again, just to remind you guys. Zechariah chapter 1, which is relating to this portion of the end of times. Why does Zechariah 8, uh, Zechariah 1 start with the eighth month? Why does it start with the eighth month? Well, we see in Nehemiah 1 that at some point in the ninth month, they're looking back at Israel, at Jerusalem, that was already attacked and destroyed for the first one. They haven't scattered throughout the whole earth. They're being warned if they don't smarten up and turn, they'll be scattered throughout the whole earth, which is what's going to come next. But that at some point in chapter nine, in the ninth month, they're looking back at it having already happened. So that would mean at some point from the eighth month, at some point in the eighth month to some point in the ninth month, that first attack must have happened. Yet at this point, it hasn't quite happened because he's looking back and remembering those who are in the ark. Okay? This period of time is still min amongst what? The 40 days? The 40 days that they're in the ark? The 40 days as the type and shadow of the Son of Man? <laughs> this, is, this is level, you know, 401, 501. This is for those that have been watching for a while. Okay? So this is during the 40 days. And there's a reason I'm building this in for you guys. Because at the end of 40 days, we know there's this type of about 10 days still to come for the Holy Ghost. All right? That Eleazar type, the, the helper of the Holy Ghost. We know that that's the type and shadow of still what comes. 40 days of the Son of Man. The new disciples, apostles are chosen. They're going to have to wait for the new Acts 2.0 anointing about 10 days later. All right, it's going to be a repeat, a replay of a type and shadow of what was, but much grander this time because it'll be out through the whole earth. Okay, so now you can remember that. Suddenly it jumps back here to the eighth day. Sorry, to the eighth month. We see that the seventh month, he has saved and it's a group that is glorious and marvelous and set apart from everyone else that he has saved in the seventh month. You see what I'm getting at, right? Well, what can happen in the eighth month? Should we have a look and see what the eighth month captain is saying? Which is a period of time, maybe a little bit after, or maybe even a little bit before, but a little bit, you know, sometime in that eighth month period when Zechariah chapter one is beginning. Here's the name. Uh, Sib Sibkai Suke. You ready? Like a corpse. Corpse. Uh, a cops, sorry, like. Okay, cops like to entwine together. Okay, to enfold. This period of time is coming. See, it's all about to begin, but what about the ninth month? What about the ninth month? The ninth month should relate to a period that maybe Israel will have been destroyed in that first attack, but we know that the Holy Ghost is coming at about that time. There's something in relation to the period of the Holy Ghost coming. Exactly like we've been showing. Exactly like what we call Acts 2.0. Well, look at this. The captain of the ninth month. Father of help. Who is that? Ezer, like Eliezer, right? Watch this. Go to the root of it. There it is. Aid or help surrounding them helping them it doesn't mean surrounding jerusalem but it's aid or help like the holy ghost eleazar 
when? In, in the ninth month. So if you take at some point in the seventh, even towards the end of the seventh, you take the eighth month, some point in the ninth month would be what? It would cover from 31 to 60 days, which would be the end of the 40 and then also the 10 days in it. That would be right smack dab in the ninth month when the helper comes. All of these things are in order, brothers and sisters. This was the the celebrating, the little happy dance that came from seeing this seventh month. He has saved a wonderful, joyful, set-apart group. I think we got it. I think we can understand. We're here. You know, people want to come against and they're going to say, oh, now you're pushing it. You're pushing. Well, first of all, we were already saying this time is a possibility uh, earlier in uh, the last couple of videos. But, you know, people will come against and when they come against, they say, oh, another one of those just pushing it further, pushing it further. No, it's the job of watchmen. We have the revelation given here in this ministry. We have the opening of the end time books, the true revelation of it. That if you were to go to some of these people that only understand seven years and say, well, how does that equal 2000 years from Christ's death and resurrection? There's no answer because it's not till 33. Or you say, well, how is the tribulation seven years when the seventh year is rest? It's only six. Well, now it's even further off. You see, guys, we have the revelation here. And now we're coming into the nitty gritty. And those who still want to say, ah, you guys are just pushing the date, pushing the date. No, we're watching because of the revelations that have been given. And we're calling it out as it's getting closer. And we're doing it viably with sun, moon, and stars. And we're doing it viably with the scriptures. Viably with the 70 years and the seventh year. We just haven't fully been given that exact time yet. But we got the de decade. We got the years. We got the months it would appear now too. And we got the after seven. The only way there could be another after seven is if the feast had an additional seven days because it was a great joyful time coming. You see? So for those who still want to come against and say pushing and pushing and pushing, they don't understand the job of the watchman, guys. They don't understand the job of the watchman. When they were up on that wall and they saw something in the distance and they called it out, they sounded that alarm. The people in the sea would have to wake up and get ready. And then if it was nothing, it was, it was a family of bears and there was scrapping going on in the bushes. Well, they had to call it. But there was a bunch of people in the city that were, eh, oh, why did you call it? Why didn't you just look closer? You see, they'll whine and complain. Ah, oh, you woke me up. I was sleeping so nicely. I'm going back to bed. You just, you, you fake called me on that one. You think we do this for fun? You think I do this because, because I, I just want to do this and I don't believe it just as much as I'm putting it out there? Of course I do. That's the revelation, the whole revelation of everything opening here. We thought it was the 70th like everybody else did in 2018. Now we know what the truth is. And what are those same people going to say when it finally comes and that call goes out again like it is now and then it comes, they're going to say, oh, what are you calling again? Or they're going to just say, ah, forget it, I'm going to stay in bed this time. See, we try, but if they choose to stay in bed, guess what? When it happens, there's no way they're going to be able to deny it. And they'll probably be some of the strongest, most fervent people for the word and for the Lord at that time. Because they were told and they will have realized, oh my goodness. And that's why when the Holy Ghost comes and that group receives that Acts 2.0 anointing, they're going to be, it's going to be a time of revival like has never been in all of human history. A billion plus people. 
during that portion, during the portion of seals. That's what's coming. That's what the, the last video revealed in all this understanding. The apostolic age coming first. The revival, the Acts 2.0, when the Holy Ghost comes. And according to this now, looking at the months, at some point in the true ninth month, the Holy Ghost will come. Well, if that's true, and we've already understood that to be true for, for a long time now, because we know the Son of Man comes first for 40 days, even though the world is teaching us that there, there's no Son of Man that comes first, He doesn't come till the end. They just don't know the revelation of the 40 days of the Son of Man first. We've known it for three years. And the Holy Ghost coming next. The scriptures tell us the ninth month is the Holy Ghost. Some point in the ninth month of the true ninth month, the Holy Ghost will come and anoint this new apostolic age group that will be the great revivalists of the portion of tribulation of seals. And if that's true, and we've known that for the longest time, then what about seven in the seventh month being saved and it being connected to a seven days and maybe another seven days apparently? We're here. Remember, just take deep breaths and look around at what's going on in the world. You know, sometimes in our closed in bubbles, we forget, yeah, there's the mask and all that. But it's getting worse and worse and worse. The lockdowns and the restrictions are going to get crazier and crazier. Sure lines up with being able to escape all these things, doesn't it? They can hide some of the escape. Most people won't know what have happened. Their families are in their homes and, oh, all these people escaped and it'll be spoken about everywhere, but most people won't get it anyways. Didn't affect anybody they knew. See? Now let's show it one more. Let's show it to the new revelation. We've got all of these things, man, in order. All speak in the same language. Now what about Judges? The book of Judges for the longest time, like I said. The book of Judges. This won't take too long. I'm not going to go into every detail of it. But the book of Judges for the longest time, I knew there had to be a connection in the book of Judges. And because of these 21 chapters, it, I believe it's the only book that has 21 chapters. So knowing what the 14s were, knowing Micah in the 7, I knew there had to be something with Judges. But I was always looking at it from chapter 1 to 21. Why wouldn't I? That's the way they were all being revealed. But remember, just a few months ago, we had the revelation here of the book of Exodus revealing to us in reverse, just like we know, 2034, the, when the Lord, the year the Lord returns, the end of 2033, the end of the 33rd year to that four, to 2034, it'll be the spring of 34. And that's the final year that'll be fulfilled of the Lord here, bringing the destruction against all those who came against Jerusalem. They will now be destroyed for the most part. And what does the scripture tell us? that they would come in and be the workers of the vineyards. They're now going to work for Jews, for, for Jerusalem, for the Lord in the land. That's part of what's going to happen at the end. I'm going to show you that even in Judges in order. But you see, I didn't understand about it potentially going in reverse till we had this revelation here in, Ju in uh, Exodus uh, a few months back. All right? we realized, well, wait a second. When I started looking at it this way, like we normally would read it, things seemed to be in an opposite order. And I started looking at it more closely and I started seeing these little pieces. You know, the covenants renewed. And I'm like, what? The covenants renewed? Well, that's not going to happen. Well, hold on a second. And, you know, anyway, so I start going into all these things and we saw this right here. This was a big piece that started getting me to understand. You're going to observe the feast of the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Well, we know that the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat harvest happened back at Pentecost. That's why we were expecting to be gone earlier in the year at Pentecost. 
the first fruits of the wheat harvest, which is at the Feast of Weeks, which is the 10% that is brought into the house of the Lord, happens at Pentecost. But here it tells us it's observed at the Feast of Ingathering at the year's end. That, brothers and sisters, is tabernacles. When we realize this and realize this went in reverse, we had a whole new thing open up to us. And a couple days ago, uh, some uh, a brother and sister in the forum with uh, Holly and Rick, they were talking about something that he had discovered in the book of Judges. I went to go look at it. And as I looked at it, I said, wait a second. This thing with Judges, because I started in chapter one. So I went to go look and I started looking at these things in chapter one. And I said, this, this doesn't sound like the beginning at all. I mean, I know it doesn't, it's not the beginning, but I mean, it's got things like Joshua, the son of Nun, and those who have been following for a while know what that's about. And it's got the covenant that's no longer going to be broken, being made in chapter two. I'm like, man, that is, this is not making sense here. And it dawned on me, a switch went off in my mind. And I said, wait a second. We have Exodus that went in reverse in that revelation. What if it turns out Judges is in reverse? For two and a half years, I've been trying to understand Judges because of their chapters to years. I'm certain there's something in it. Bang, it hit me. Do it in reverse. And so when I you throw it into this chart, and I said, okay, throw it in reverse for the seven years, the seven years, and the seven years. What should we see? In chapter 15, we should see the same kind of language in the seventh year, right? Towards the end, which would be a reflection of the end of the seventh year. We should see something in relation to the bride, right? Like we were just talking about the wheat harvest that we see here in Exodus 34. We should see something maybe relating to the first bride that we read about in Jacob. Right? With Jacob, he works seven and then he gets Leah expecting Rachel. But then he has to fulfill the week. And then he can get the younger sister, Rachel, that he really wanted in the first place. But he still has to do what? He still has to work seven more years for her, right? There should be something along those lines. And then we should be able to go in maybe chapter 7 or chapter chapter 8 or even chapter 7 and see something that would relate maybe to, to the beginning of trumpets, right? There's key things that we can go to once we stick it into this chart. We can go to these main events that we understand to look for. We should be able to go to chapter 2 as the 20th year in relation to something relating to the Son of Man, right? Or the Lord's return or... Or an event at that time frame. So what if we go to chapter 15. Seeing that it's in reverse. And see what we can find in Judges chapter 15. You ready for this one? But it came to pass within a while. After. Sorry. It, it, but it came to pass after. Uh, um, within a while after. In the time of the wheat harvest. And for those of you who don't know, yeah, we're up in snow here in Canada. But do you know in the Southern Hemisphere, we have some sisters that sent us a beautiful picture of the wheat all bowed over, ready to be harvested right now in South Africa. You see, in parts of the world, it's still the harvest season. So it is applicable as well. But what do we know about this wheat harvest time? Well, I just showed you this comparison to Exodus 34, when the wheat harvest is going to be observed. Okay, so we got a little tidbit, tidbit right there. But it gets better. Watch this. Um, in the time of the wheat harvest, that Samson visited his wife with a kid. His wife with a kid. Well, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Hosea chapter 1. We have, go get your wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. 
Okay, go get your wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. All right, we got something going on here. Listen to what it says next. And he said, I will go in to my wife into the chamber. Well, let's see what else we got going on there. How about what would happen next after Psalms 18, which is the year we're in now, the beginning of 19 says what? Which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, rejoicing as a strong man running a race. So he went into the chamber prior to 19. Because in 19, he's coming out of his chamber, ready to rejoice. So, so far, each piece of this has a relation to these books and chapters we have known and revealed here in this ministry for the last couple, three years. But it gets better. But, remember, these are types of shadows. But her father would not suffer him to go in. And her father said, Verily, I thought that thou didst utterly hate her. Wait a second. Where does that come from? How about we go to the story of Jacob and his two wives? What happened with Jacob? There was, Le uh, uh, there was Leah and Rachel. But he didn't want Leah... He wanted Rachel, the younger, fairer one, right? And he says, heck yeah, I'll work seven years for her. He was so excited to work those first seven years. He was so excited to work the first seven years. Okay? That they seemed unto him but a few days. This is what we're in right now. Excitedly working for her, right? And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. <laughs> We're seeing the same story. We're seeing the same story. And he ends up making a feast. How long is the feast? Well, first of all, he goes in unto her. He goes to the chamber, wakes up the next morning, and he finds out that the, his father-in-law beguiled him. Right? He fooled him by giving Leah the older one instead of the younger, fairer one. But he says, look, fulfill her week. Just fulfill her week. Well, what's this week, brothers and sisters? This is the tabernacle's type and shadow. Fulfill her week. So fulfilling her week would be the same as saying what? After seven days. And then what's he going to get? For yet seven other years. So Fulfill her week, and I will then give you Rachel also, the younger, fairer one that you wanted. But even though you get her, you still have to work seven more years for her. This is the second seven years. This is seals. Who is this type of Rachel that we can talk about here? This is like those apostles being chosen, the foundation layers. All right. Then there's going to be the 144,000 after seals. That's the other portion of the group. Okay. The ones who Jesus really came for. So, what do we see? He gets after seven. He gets the first one. There's a feast of seven days. He realizes he was beguiled because he wanted the younger, more fairer one. Okay? Let's go back into Judges chapter 15. I will go into the chamber and the father-in-law. Verily, I thought that you utterly hated her. Well, that's exactly what happened with Jacob and Leah. Don't you feel for Leah, guys? <laughs> Don't you feel for poor Leah? She was the most devout to him, the most dedicated one to him. She actually got buried with the family. Rachel ended up getting buried along the side in their travels. Okay? But she was the most devout, but even though he had all those kids and everything, it's not the one he wanted. He didn't really love her, not like the way he loved Rachel. It's the same type and shadow going on. So the father says, but verily, I thought you hated her. Therefore, I gave her to thy companion. Is not her younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. 
What's the story, guys? <laughs> Do I need to spell it out any more clear in these two verses? The time of the wheat harvest, going into the chamber, not liking the younger one, and one, or sorry, not liking the older one that he got first, and really wanting the younger, fairer one that he wanted in the first place. Guys, it's the exact same story of the beginning. Seven years worked. Boom. Gets her. Didn't really want that one. But it's the Hosea. It's the same time of getting her. Right at the beginning. Right at the end of the beginning. Then he gets her. And what has to happen? Just like the story of, of Jacob. He now has to work seven years. Once he gets the fairer one at the start. Who is this fairer one that he gets at the start? How about we go to Luke chapter 12. Remember we said this Luke chapter 12. We talked about it a number of times. When he comes back from the wedding. You see it's the same type and shadow again. With the whole Leah Rachel thing. That when I open, here's the first group. This is that group of Rachel that he wanted, the, 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 those that will become the apostles. These guys are the first watch. This is when he returns unto them. This is the younger, fairer one, you could say. And then we see that there's two watches, there's a second watch, and there's a third watch. There's no mention of four. One is this group here. Then there's a second, and then there's a third. So when is the first watch that portion with, with, uh, with the ones Jesus really wanted, the apostles? Well, it's at the end of seals. That, that portion is done. The first watch is done. He's fulfilled the seven years now of Rachel that he got at the end of the first week of the wedding. And he fulfilled it. And at the end of the seven years of seals, he's got Rachel. You see, he's got Rachel, but at the end of those seven years, we know that the 144,000 will go out. They're called the second watch, which would be what? The middle watch. If there's three of them, the second watch is the middle watch. They're going to go out and they're going to go out during trumpets. We've shown that many times and we've shown it in the charts and all the charts. Okay. Seals are done. He's put in that time for Rachel. He has those apostles and now you got the 144,000 and the 144,000 are standing on Mount Zion and they're now about to go out for the portion of trumpets and they're called what? The 144,000, they're called the wall builders. They're, uh, they're the second watch or the middle watch. Okay, well, when does that happen? Beginning of trumpets. Okay, beginning of trumpets. So this is clearly the beginning. We can clearly, clearly see that it is exactly, 100% precisely, the exact same type and shadow of everything we've been talking about. Okay? What if we go to chapter, oh, let's, let's make sure. Let's go to the chapter to year. Okay, there's chapter 8, which is the seventh year of seals. If we go to chapter 7, remember, I'm not going to go into all of them, but if we go into chapter 7... What do we see in chapter 7? Okay, let's go to chapter 7, which would be the first year of trumpets. And what do we see? And he divided the 300 men into company into three companies, putting a trumpet in every man's hand and an empty pitcher with lamps in it. Here it comes. Starting in verse 19, Judges 7, verse 19 and 20. So Gideon and... The hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch. Do you understand for it to be the middle watch, there's only three? Can't be the middle watch if there's four. There's no such thing as the fifth watch. Okay, this is the second watch. This is the middle watch, guys. So who would this be speaking to? It says it's the beginning of the middle watch. They had just set the watch. 
Who was I just showing this was? Well, this would be a representation of the time of the 144,000 going out. And what time would it be? The beginning of trumpets? To the point that they all blew their trumpets? At the middle watch. The middle watch. Chapter 7. Beginning of trumpets. They're blowing trumpets. And the middle watch we've been teaching for over two and a half years is the 144,000. It's the second watch we just saw in Luke chapter 12. These guys right here. The whole thing's in order, guys. Over and over and over and over again. It reveals it. All of these books being opened unto us. The second watch after the first, after the wedding. Chapter 7 chapter 7 uh, sorry chapter 15 then chapter 7 for the second watch how about judges chapter 2 where does judges chapter 2 take us it takes us to the 20th year see what happens in judges chapter 2 and we'll kind of finish it off with this what happens in judges chapter 2 and an angel of the lord came from gilead and bochum and said I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. You want to know where that is? Where was it related to? The 20th year, the 13th year? Watch this. Remember the story of Jacob? Let's go to the story of Jacob again. Let's go into verse 31. What happens in the story of Jacob? He has this dispute with his father-in-law. He's like, look, I've been 20 years in your house. I served you 14 years for your two daughters. This isn't the 14 years of tribulation. One of these sevens was the first seven that we're coming to an end to. And the second seven is the one for Rachel, which is seals. So you got the seven easy that we're talking about coming to an end to now. You got the seven of seals. And then what happens? He says, and I worked six years for your cattle. How many years? 20 years. What chapter does it equal? Chapter 20. What does it mean? What happens in the 20th year? Now, therefore, come thou, let us make a covenant I and thou, and let us be let it be a witness between me and thee. What happened in the 20th year? Covenant. What happened in the 20th year or in chapter 2? The covenant now with the Lord that won't be broken anymore. What happened in Genesis, the end of 20 or the beginning of 21? Watch this. How about the one in Genesis starting in 17? What do we see? Abraham is 99 years old. How old was he when he had the first son? He was 86, so this is 13 years later. What happens? God's going to make a covenant with him. So Abraham's now 13 years later after his first son, and it literally tells us that he was 99, and Ishmael was what? 13 years old. What's 13 years old? What's 13 years from where the count began when Abraham was 86 and Ishmael, which means tribulation, which means affliction, he's now 13 years later, which is also the same as saying the 20th. Covenant was made there. Covenant is made there. See? God now makes the covenant. He now establishes and renews that covenant once and for all. What happens in chapter 21, which is like saying at the end of the 20 years, right? That 20 years comes right at the end or beginning of 20, of 21, sorry. What do we see? The promise. Isaac, the type and shadow of Christ. Why did I say Genesis is the same as John in the 21 chapters? In the first 21 chapters of Genesis, it's the same as John's 21 years. 
They're all saying the same thing. They're all of these types and shadows of what was, will be. Over and over and over again. For those that don't know Daniel 9 very well. Daniel 9, everybody thinks is talking about a seven years. It's not. It's the 14 years. See, 70 years will come to pass first. There's going to be a first destruction. Then there's going to be a commandment to restore and rebuild. But for seven years, it's going to remain empty. Then for the first three and a half years with Messiah on Mount Zion, they're going to be rebuilding the city and the streets and the wall. Isn't that appropriate that it's the wall that's mentioned? Why the wall? Because the 144,000 represent the wall. The first half of trumpets when they're sent out. When those three and a half years are passed, so what is it? Seven years are passed, three and a half years of building. When the three and a half years are building are done, Messiah is cut off. And then what? The pit is open and they come in, they destroy. Satan declares himself God. You see, during this seven, it was Antichrist time. Antichrist speaking blasphemous things during the seven years of seals. This portion is God. Uh, sorry, is Satan claiming to be God? And there's going to be a war. And it's going to last for two and a half years. All of that devastation. At the second half, after ten and a half years of tribulation. Of seals and trumpets time. Then you got two and a half years of this war. We've proven all these things before. Go watch the videos we have on Daniel. What happens in that final year? Well, you got seven. You got three and a half. You got two and a half. That equals what? 13 years. What happens in the final year? Boom. The covenant renewed. The covenant confirmed. When? 13th year. When with Abraham? 13th year. When with Jacob? 20th year. When did it work out? When did it turn out? In Judges? Chapter 2, same time. Same exact time. Over and over and over again, brothers and sisters. Listen to what it says, and I'll finish with this. And Joshua had led the people go. The children of Israel went every man into his own inheritance to possess the land. Isn't that what happens at the end? Right? What if we go to the book of Revelation, you go to chapter 11. Go to chapter 11 at the seventh trumpet. Everything is now the Lord's. Everybody's freaking out. He's now reigned. Everything's his. And now the time of the wrath of bulls is going to come. But now it's the time of the dead that they should be judged and the prophets and saints. And what's going to happen? They're all getting their land. They're all going to get their land. We can take that into Psalms. Is it 33 or I think 133? See, 33, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Always, guys, every single piece lines up over and over and over again. But what was today's focus? What did I really want you? Yes, you guys can go in and seek these things for yourself in all these chapters to years. But I really wanted to show you that all of these things are talking about the seventh year of rest in their seventh chapter or their equivalent seventh chapter to the beginning time of tribulation. They're all showing us the seventh year. They're now showing us in the 70th that we've known for a while. And they're showing us the seventh month. I don't, I, I, in relation to try to show this time, I, I think this is it. I think this is it. I mean, I, I can't, I don't know how much more I can just keep pounding it on the head, right? Seventh year, seventh month, after seven days. In the 70th year, before the 71st begins, we've got the months now revealed to us, guys. We have the months, the years, the day. 
Be ready. Have your house in order. Your personal, your your spiritual house within you. And understand that we're here. It's true. After the seventh, I don't know what to tell you. Am I going to be so distraught that I'm not going to teach anymore? No, because I know we're in the seventh. I know we're in the 70th. And all we got to do is look around the world to understand it's just moments away. And then add to the revelation from over two years ago, well, almost two years ago, that Trump would not complete his first term because the church will have failed. Be ready, bride. Be watching and praying always. We are at the door. I love you guys. God bless you. God bless you. We'll talk to you again soon, or we'll see you even sooner. Bye for now.